Okay, well, welcome to my first video lecture of chapter two. Uh, I'm just going to talk about measurements and the metric system. So some of you may be familiar with the metric system already. Um, many of you are probably only going to be familiar with the imperial system, um, and I'll talk about it, and I'll sort of help adjust you to the metric system. So first, I want to just talk about measurements in general. Measurements, first let's define what we mean by a measurement. A measurement is really just an observation, it's a piece of data, but it's, it's got a number attached. So in other words, measurements, data or observations all come in two types, uh, qu uh, quantitative or qualitative. Um, qualitative is something that doesn't have a number attached. So this is no number. So like the substance was blue or it was a liquid. Um, quantitative, coming from quantity, um, they have a number attached. So um, it was a liquid and its boiling point is 126 degrees Celsius or its density is 1.104 grams per milliliter, something like that. Numbers are attached. And that's the difference between quantitative, meaning quantity for numbers, and then qualitative, just meaning uh, no number attached. So a measurement is effectively just a quantitative measurement, There's a, or a quantitative observation. So it's just um, a number, fundamentally. But there's really, there's two parts of any measurement. There is, um, there is a numerical value, like, um, like 16, but already you may see that there's a problem with this. There's something missing. I just said 16. Uh, this gives you no indication of what the heck this is. This doesn't even, you can't even figure out from this number what type of measurement it is. Is this a volume? Is this a, a mass? What, who knows what this is? We also require a unit. So a unit gives the type of measurement and the specific unit. So if I write centimeters, now we know that this is a length or a distance. If I had written grams, now we know it's a mass. So I'm gonna talk about the different units and the different types of measurements, but two things are really important. One, anytime in this class when you write a number down, it needs to have a unit attached on any assignment any quiz, any exam, no matter how many points the question is worth, you will lose half a point for not writing down the, uh, the unit. Another important thing is sort of what I just did there, which is you can actually figure out what kind of unit, it, what kind of measurement it is, volume, mass, length, just by looking at the units. And the units are even gonna be a bigger clue in a little bit when we do uh, unit conversions and problem solving. So units are a really big deal you need to be in the habit of writing them down all the time. So, indicates whether the me measurement is a volume, mass, length, etc. A measurement without a unit is meaningless. If I said, if I said, meet me here in five, you may assume minutes, because that's a common term, but maybe I meant hours, maybe I meant days, it's unclear. So, you always need units attached. Okay. There's two basic systems I mentioned already, English or imperial system used in the US and uses all kinds of different units for each measurement type. So, you know, 12 inches in a foot, 5,280 feet in a mile, and there's all sorts of different reasons for why these numbers are what they are. The metric system is what we're going to use, and it's actually, once you adjust and are used to the metric system, it's actually a simpler and easier system. It's used in basically all the rest of the world that isn't the United States. Pretty much everyone else in the on the entire planet uses the metric system. And each measurement has a base, u base unit, like, for example, grams. But we also can modify the unit. We can have milligrams. Right? I just put a prefix out in front. 
this changes the value of the unit by some power of 10. So 10, 100, 1,000, a million, something like that, or 0 0.1, 0 0.001, some power of 10. And we'll get into the specifics here in just a moment. So as a base unit, base unit of, the, of length is the meter. So when we talk about length or distance, meters are our base unit. So 14 meters, right? But you might also see, uh, which I struck about all the base units, the base unit of mass is the gram. So this is that measure of how much stuff is there. Remember, mass is different from weight, uh, but I'll talk about in a minute how. Actually. So here's our two examples. We have meters and we have grams for mass. We modify everything by putting a prefix in front of it. So, for example, example, kilo means a thousand. So, a gram is a specific unit. So, gram. A kilogram Kilo means 1,000. So what this literally means is 1,000 grams. Now, the cool thing about the, the metric system is it doesn't matter what base unit I'm modifying. All of these prefixes are the same for every unit type. So what I just said about a kilogram being 1,000 grams is equally true for meters. A meter is about three feet. Um, So, and the abbreviation for a meter is M, but a kilometer, a kilometer, kilo means a thousand, so one kilometer is a thousand meters. Does that make sense? Um, not that you can actually answer me. Um, so a kilosecond is a thousand seconds, a kilogram is a thousand grams. It doesn't matter what I put kilo in front of, it means a thousand. Nano, for example, is one billionth. So one billionth would be 0.000, so I have to actually count them out. Uh, so hundreds, so tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, ten millions, hundred millionths, billionths, so one billionth, so. So a nano is one billionth, so one nanometer is a billionth of a meter. Nanoliter is a billionth of a liter, etc. So here's um, the important thing is no matter which base unit they're attached to, prefixes always have exactly the same meaning. So Centi always is 0.01, or 10 to the negative 2. Therefore, centimeter is always equivalent to 0.01 meters. So here are all the prefixes. I know that there are some in here that are not in your book. Um, I want you to have these all memorized. So this may seem like an awful lot of work, but When I say you have to have them memorized, what I mean is you need to know each, you basically need to know this for each of these. So you don't have to have the ta recreate the table exactly, though you can. Um, you need to know that kilo is abbreviated K and is equal to 1,000. It's going to be easier, actually, for us to work with these powers of 10, but I've written out their meanings so you can sort of associate them with maybe a format you're more used to. A kilo, a, a kilo means a thousand, so 10 to the third. Mega is 10 to the sixth. Giga is 10 to the ninth. We go, th and here, this blank, this is where the base unit goes. So this would be meter, unmodified meter, gram, liter, whatever. So a deci is a tenth, centi is a hundredth, milli is a thousandth, micro, nano, pico, femto, all the way down. Really, you just, if you know the power associated with, and the sign is very important, positive or negative, you can get it. And there's also a pattern here. If you can just remember it goes kilo, mega, giga, you know that going upward from the base unit, it's, they go by multiples of three. Going down the other way, we have one, two, and negative one, negative two, negative three. Then we have 
go by threes again. So it's really just a matter of remembering the order. So you do need to know all of these. Um, and I will, uh, up on Angel is the date that you need to have this memorized by. Okay, so just to kind of talk about what these units are, distance is used to measure length along a path. can be a straight line, but it doesn't have to be. It's just a, a length of the side of an object or how, too far, how far apart two things are. English units of distance you may be, uh, or imperial units of distance you may be used to, inch, foot, mile, yard, fathom, the furlong. Oh, by the way, um, I should say, for as far as conversion, converting goes, I am not going to expect you to have memorized that one inch equals uh, 2.54 centimeters. You don't need to know that. The only conversion factors you need to know are going to come from knowing these. This is it as far as conversion factors go. In fact, for those of you who are not, maybe not from this country or did not grow up with the international system, or not international system, the imperial system, I am not expecting you to even know that. I will put on an exam where I will tell you that there are 12 inches in a foot. That is not a thing I'm expecting you to memorize. So metric units are, the meter is the basic unit, so things like centimeter, kilometer, micrometer, millimeter, whatever. Mass is, as I said, the measure of matter in an object. This is different from weight. Weight is the gravitational force exerted on an object. Now, it is true that the weight is the mass times the gravitational acceleration. So often we, we determine the mass of an object by weighing it. We put it on a scale and the mass, the balance, aut is automatically calibrated to divide out this g. So if we can find mass by weight over gravitational acceleration. So the scale usually does that for us automatically. We don't have to do that. But I just want you to kind of know what's going on under the hood. Weight depends on the acceleration due to gravity and therefore location. So actually, you do weigh a little bit less on the top of a mountain or at sea level based on how far away you are from the center of the Earth. Um, but your mass never changes. Mass is always the same. So understand that when we weigh things, we're actually doing a little calculation. We're weighing the mass. And if we had, or not weighing the mass, but we're determining the mass. If we had, uh, if we, were, if we uh, were determining the mass of something at a higher elevation or say on the moon, we could still do it. We would just have to recalibrate the scale to divide by a different value of g. The metric unit of mass is the gram and therefore any modified gram. So I really want you guys to get used to seeing this. I want you to see that the, the, here is gram. This is the unit, right here, gram, 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 gram. And this is the prefix. Really break it apart. Really identify that that's a prefix, okay? Okay. Uh, mass versus weight. I kind of already said this. But I'll let you look over this. This isn't so critical that I want to spend super amount of time, super huge amount of time on it. It's just important to understand that mass and weight are different. I will use them differently in sentences. Don't confuse them. Don't interchange them. Okay. Now we have some basic units down. Derived units. Now the concept of derived units is, is really interesting. We're going to see this a lot. Um, we have certain basic units that we have, like grams, uh, meters, that sort of thing. Even things like kilometers and kilograms are usable. But Units can be multiplied, divided, and canceled like any other mathematical variable. So, for example, um, velo velocity, like speed, like when, we're dri when you're driving, your speed when you're driving is actually distance divided by time. So it's distance divided by time. So a unit of distance is the meter, a distance a unit of time is the seconds, or maybe more what you're more used to is miles is a unit of distance, hours is a unit of time, so when we divide those out, what we get is we get meters over seconds or maybe miles per hour. So this is a combined aggregate unit, right? We don't separate it out, we don't do anything with it, it's just miles over hours, but it's its own new unit of velocity. It just has these components of other units in it. But I want you to realize that this is now a new unit of velocity. 
So if you travel 80 miles in two hours, you calculate it, we take 80 miles over two hours, and we get, of course, 40 miles per hour. So there are several ways you're going to see this represented, but I want you to see these compound units always the same. Realize that they're interchangeable. Miles over hours, 40 applies to the miles over hours. The 40 miles over one hour, because that's really what we're saying. We're saying how many miles can we go in a single hour? That's what happens when we divide something out. Or you might see it this way, and this is probably the trickiest. People miss this all the time. They don't realize that this hour is in the denominator. And this is going to be important when we do unit conversions. I will re-emphasize this again then, but realize that this is miles divided by hours, or 40 miles over one hour. So, like velocity, velocity is now a derived unit. It's a combination of other units we've already seen. But some get so complex that we give them their own special name and relabel them. So, for example, the Newton is a measure of, is actually weight. If we take um, mass in, say, kilograms, which is actually what's normally done, times the gravitational acceleration that, just remember, W equals mass times G. The gravitational acceleration is actually in meters per second squared, right? So it's pretty complicated. And this gives us kilograms per meters second squared. Well, actually, that's so annoyingly complicated that what we do is we just give it a new name. We call it the Newton. So bundled up in this N, scientists know that what we're really looking at is a kilogram times meters over second squared. Um, a joule is similar, but it's kilograms times meters squared per second squared. We'll need to know this later, but not now. So don't worry about this for now. I am just showing this to you to make a point. And the reason I'm making this point is to talk about area and volume. So area and volume are derived units. So, all right, area. It expresses the two-dimensional size of an object. So here are the various ways to calculate various shapes. I just want you to see that there's a theme going on here, right? Side times side, so S, length, you know, length times length, or length times width, base times height. Notice in every case, radius squared, so that's radius times radius. In every case, we're taking a length times a length. So imagine if that length was in centimeters. I'd take centimeters times centimeters. And maybe to make it more concrete, imagine it's 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters is the length of a, squ uh, of a, a square, the size of a square. I get 100, but my units are also being multiplied, and I get centimeters times centimeters, which is centimeters squared. It's important to understand that this unit, centimeters squared, is now a new unit of a new type. Centimeters with no exponent, or just to first power, that is a unit of length, or distance. Centimeters squared, however, is a unit of area. They are different, they are distinct, right? So now if you see centimeters squared, you know you're looking at area. If you saw inches squared, area, feet squared, area, not length. It is no longer length. I am, it is not possible for me to take 100 centimeters squared plus 15 centimeters. That is a nonsensical problem. You cannot add and subtract, you can multiply, but you cannot add and subtract things of different units. They don't make any sense. How do you add an area to length? It makes no sense. So, here we go. So here's some examples. Inches squared, feet squared, meters squared, centimeters squared. Volume functions the same way, basically. In every case, we end up with a distance times a distance times a distance, so a distance cubed. So if you ever see cubed distances, that's a volume, not an area, not a length. They are different. The metric unit of volume is the liter. This is actually a derived unit. What a liter is, is a liter is actually the volume of a cube that is 10 centimeters on the side. So if I take 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters, oops, 
times 10 centimeters, right? I get what? That's right, a thousand centimeters cubed, and I just define that as a liter, right? Well, actually, it turns out, interestingly, there are a milliliter is a thousandth of a liter, which means there's a thousand milliliters in a liter, and it just so happens then, therefore, that a cubic centimeter, <laughs> I did that funny, sorry, I should have written milliliters over here, and a milliliter the same thing. You may have heard the term CC, particularly like medical dramas, a cc is a cubic centimeter. So cubic centimeter, cc, milliliter, these are all the same thing. These are all interchangeable. OK. So I'm going to wrap up here just talking generally about some uh, units here. Uh, I want you to pause this, take a moment, and answer for me which of the following, which of each pair of units is larger. Now, there's one of them that's a little tricky, and I just, remember, my theme in this class is don't take any face value, you're not, answer the question to the best of your ability, and it may not always be what you think it's going to be, but try just to reason it out, and it's okay, I put some tricky ones on here because they help me make a point, so hopefully, don't be too frustrated, I'm warning you, there is one that's a little tough on here. So, hopefully you've paused it, hopefully you've done it. Um, so the first one, centimeters or kilometers? A centimeter is a hundredth of a meter, and a kilometer is a thousand meters, so definitely, oh, I don't have it there. So definitely, the kilometer is definitely larger. Gigaliters or liters? Well, a gigaliter is a million, uh, a billion liters. So, that one. Nanogram or picogram? Well, a nanogram is 10 to the negative ninth, and a picogram is 10 to the negative 12th. So a picogram is a lot smaller than a nanogram, so a nanogram is bigger. Megaliter or milliliter, megaliter is a million liters. Milliliter is only is a thousandth of a liter. Kiloliter or cubic centimeter? Kiloliter or cubic centimeter, what do you guys think? Remember, a cubic centimeter is equal to a milliliter. So this is definitely bigger here. Right? Definitely bigger. Because this is, this is only a milliliter. Right? That one's pretty tricky. Down here, millimeter or centiliter? I bet a lot of you said this one. And good, good looking out in that you were paying attention to the, to the metric prefixes. And that's good. It's because centi is 10 to the negative 2 and milli is 10 to the negative 3, so centi, uh, centi is bigger. However, here's the problem. This is a centiliter. This is a millimeter. You can't really compare them. They're apples and oranges. What's a, I mean, basically the question is asking what's bigger, you know, a, a glass of juice or the length of a table. Like they're, they're just, they're, they're not comparable. So this is not an answerable question. So, sorry to throw such a curveball at you. However, my point is, I want you to really be paying attention, not just to the size of these things. You really need to be thinking about what they mean. Don't fall into the trap of this class of just going through things rote and sort of just closing your eyes and putting on blinders and just going through the motions. Be thinking about what all of these things mean as we're doing it. That is the key, right? So always be paying attention. Always be thinking about these things, okay? And if you're having trouble with that, if that's, you're not understanding it well, that's when you need to come see me, okay? Um, again, I want you to pause it and try this. Okay, so here, this is a centimeter. How many of the base unit is it equal to? So what I'm asking is one centimeter is equal to 10 to the negative two meters. The reason I'm doing it this way, the reason I'm asking it this way is this brings to bear just those numbers that are on the chart, right? So one of the prefixed unit, the unit with the prefix, is equal to whatever the definition of that prefix is in the base unit. So again, 
This is going to be mega liter. So one mega liter equals how many liters? Well, we look and see what a mega liter is equal to. A mega liter is 10 to the 6. So mega is 10 to the 6, so one mega liter is 10 to the 6 liters. This is a, this weird symbol is microgram, I was about to write liter, microgram, one microgram is equal to, micro means 10 to the negative six grams. D is decimeter, one decimeter is equal to 10 to the negative one meters. Okay, we have, uh, I think, one more problem. <coughs> <coughs> so here, I want you to determine what type of measurement, so length, volume, whatever. So determine what kind of measurement each of these is. So pause it and try these. Okay, this first one, kilometer, that's definitely a length. You can say distance, too. Length and distance are interchangeable. Uh, liters is volume. Milliseconds is time. Meters cubed, this cube makes it volume. Not length, not distance, those would be incorrect. It is volume. Picograms, the key here is grams. Grams is a unit of mass. Miles squared makes this an area, not a volume. Distance squared, feet is a length. And gallons is a volume. And there we go. And that's the basics of the metric system. So you kind of want to get those down, get familiar with that. Um, we will talk about how to use these in unit conversions in a little bit. So you need to be comfortable with the idea of these three exercises, identifying what the prefix is, what that prefix means, what kind of unit it is. This, by the way, this exercise is going to help you immensely. Not many, many times when we do, we're going to be doing a lot of story problems in this class. And a lot of times students tell me, I don't know how to know what each of these pieces of information is. The units tell you. The units tell you this is a length, this is a volume, this is, a, this is time. The units tell you. Always be paying attention to units. Always be writing them down.